books and the video before that was just some books I felt you should have in your apothecary for herbalists it was only a list of three so bear with me it was what I felt you should have obviously there are probably more so don't take that as the end all be all anyways in today's video I will be going over books that I have read just for fun including what I have on my Kindle I'm pretty sure there's a a lot more on here. I also included my books because I've ha I have read them a bunch of times. Anyways, so we'll just gloss over those real quick. I'm not doing a review because they're mine. They'll always have three stars because can they be better? Obviously. But are they my babies? Obviously. I'll always love them. On to the books that I have read and my rating of them. Jesus. The ones I didn't care for first or last, and I'll do the ones that I did like first, so I'll have to get off my Kindle. So, when I started writing the Taking of Persephone series, obviously as, when you're a new author they say to read the genre in which you're writing, so I got this book, For the Love of Hades. I absolutely love this book. It's the only kind of classic, not classic, but set in the proper time frame. Mine is also set in like between the Iliad and the Odyssey. A lot of retellings for Hades and Persephone are modern, so this one was one that's not modern. I originally read it on Kindle and then bought it in physical version because I loved it so much. This was definitely a five star read for me. It was so sweet. Everything about it was so amazing. I did get this off Amazon. It is by Sasha Summers, and again, it's called For the Love of Hades, and it is the Loves of Olympus series. There are a few more books. I think there's no, one for Apollo, and I think one for Ares, but I have not read those. The last physical book that I enjoyed, some of you will definitely judge me, but I had a good freaking time reading it, and that's really all that matters. If I had a good time, then it was a good book. And that was Credence. Now, if you don't know what Credence is about, it is about a 17-year-old girl whose parents die right before her 18th birthday, so she ends up going to live with her step-uncle, her father's stepbrother, whom she's never met, and his two sons, whom she's also never met. There is Hanky Panky. She has with all three. Not at the same... well... Not with the uncle and the cousins at the same time, but she does with the cousins at the same time. And it was an adventure. Now, do I think, do I personally think this is morally corrupt? No, because I feel if she's never met the guys in her entire life, then to her, he's not really her step uncle. He's just like, this guy my dad kind of knew. Because apparently, like, they weren't, like, her dad and the brother weren't even close. So this was really great. I will say, there are no trigger warnings and no review that I have seen has... It's by Penelope Douglas, by the way. No review I have seen has pointed out... There are instances where the main character is um, definitely sexually assaulted by the love interest, and she just does not see it that way. It does not register in her mind that that's what's going on, and she kind of I wouldn't say she lets it happen because that kind of makes it seem like it was okay, but it wasn't because she didn't really consent to it. It did just happen and she did kind of just go along with it, but there was no, hey, how are ya, let's talk, let's have some breakfast. It was like straight to the point. And then one of the events was aggressive. So be forewarned. Now, my Kindle. I did do a pre-recording on my iPad, but let's, let's use the iPad. So we will go over my Kindle library. 
first because I think that's important. So as you see, I have read to be our, to be read, author, the untouchables, I will explain that, witchy, which are the three witchy books, which I forgot to go over in that last video. So I'll just toss them into this and just edit it out, I guess. Um, this learning category, which really is just free things that I got, and then books that I did not finish. It says uncollected, but there's nothing in there. Anyways, and then my author category, I think I mentioned, that's just all the books I use for, like, author references. So no big deal. So we will go... First, let me explain what Untouchables is. Untouchables by problematic authors that I had. So I had this book. This, uh, this particular author did something that was quite problematic. And so I don't include it in my stuff. It is there, but I haven't read it. And now it's in that category. So we won't talk about that too much. And then my DNF category is books that I did not finish simply because I the same this hmm. be nice I'm finding it it take you that long to it find does it? it does uh there are books that I did not finish and do not plan to finish because I have books that I haven't finished and plan to finish this is a book that I do not plan to finish I do not plan to move forward with the rest of the series so my TBR is all of these books these are a lot of them I bought and a lot of them I got on fill your Kindle day or stuff your Kindle day a lot of these have spice I would say that the stranger next door and last seen alive are probably the only ones that do not have spice some of these I did start so the sirens mutiny I am currently reading I have put it down and read other books in the meantime Nothing to do with the writing, and the storyline is great. So these are all the books I'm going to read. And then I think Tricky Magic I also started, but didn't really get very far. So books I've read, not counting my three books because I've already gone over them. Kimberly Lemming, the author of That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon, That Time I Got Drunk and Needed a Love Potion and a Werewolf. The Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Human, as well as the two novellas, Two Scoops of Hellfire and A Bump in Boom Boo Hell. Those are all by Kimberly Lemming. She is my auto buy author. Anything she writes, I will buy. The Meads of Mishap series, which was the, the three with the very long titles, those just got traditionally published. They got picked up by a publisher, and so they all have new, type, um, new covers, but I absolutely love them. They're actually very short. They're not like full novels. They're like novella sized novels and then her novellas are just shorter. But those are all five stars. I will always recommend them. If you are looking for a good time, unserious with Spice, those are for you. I already discussed Priest. It is about a priest who falls in love with one of his lambs. He calls her a lamb throughout the whole thing. I can't deal with that. He also makes it very obvious that she is a white woman. I could deal with it as like the coming descriptor, like we're just meeting her so he describes her, but like it's almost any chance he can get, he describes her as a white woman. Every time you keep calling herself milk, her skin milk. Also why would you say that? That was the only downside I had to that book, but other than that, five stars. Sometimes the nicknames I can't deal with, and then the fact that he did, he did compare her skin to milk. I mean, enough was enough, but then it was the milk, and I was like, oh, get it on. Anyways, Luxuria, I also have the, the second book to Luxuria, and she's coming out with the third. It is by Colette Rose. Luxurio is also a great little spicy book if you're looking for non-serious non nonsense. Uh, I'm looking at this of all that I've read and that's what I have. Just unseriousness with a lot of spice. Which is funny because I don't write my spice like that. My spice is very minimal. Anyways, that is about a hunter that is married off to the king 
shade or demon to kind of bring an alliance between the hunters and demons but the hunters are on just like up to some shit and she wasn't really a hunter to begin with because she was making little dirty drawings of these demons so they're like get her out of here get out of here and then they then they do it great five stars i just recently finished <laughs> It's called Unhinged, and it's by Viera Valentine. Now, this was a recommendation off of a mutual from TikTok, with her very first like statement being, it's about a woman who fucks her door. And it's a door shifter book. And then I found out it's from the door's perspective. It's only 74 pages long, so it's not very long. But it is from the door's perspective, there is an explanation. It does have to do with Greek gods. There is a little plot going on. Loved it. Five stars. It was a good time. Did I think I'd be reading weird shifter books in my lifetime? No. I saw the pastry shifters and I was like, not me. And then this came about and I loved it. Five stars. So that is what I have in my Kindle. And you're wiggling it off a lot because my Cerberus is breathing on you. Cerberus, get some water, man. Get some water, bud. Why are you breathing like that? Anyways, we have Kore, The Taking of Persephone series, book one. Kore in Persephone, when she was known as Kore. Yes, I know. Kore is just what maidens were called. It is not a name. But Persephone is also kind of the same. It means destroyer. And I would like someone to explain to me why Demeter would name her daughter the destroyer when she had that view of her not being such a thing. I'm moving on. So Kore, oh! I wasn't really reading it. Um, it takes place between her being eight years old and her being 18. Yes, it is an age gap, but no, there is nothing like romantic between her being 8 or 14, as that's when her and Hades, like, introduced and stuff. Um, nothing sexual. Actually, Hades is quite irritated by the 8-year-old, and then the 14-year-old Persephone is, like, the only one talking to him. It's all explained. Love it. Um, it's based on... It's kind of all of the myths put into one, so it will have like hints to when the the myth where she was kidnapped and then a few of the kind of lesser known, not really cared for ones where she went on her own. So in this one, she does go on her own to, to the underworld and it is her journey there and why she decides to stay and things like that. It's kind of her growth into becoming the queen of the underworld. The second book is Hades. This is my favorite cover. It is his perspective from like the sort of ceremony, like baby shower ceremony of Kore up until the same timeline as hers. But it starts a little bit earlier. It explains kind of what was going on in his mind. It does have his own plot. He has things that he's doing in the underworld that he has to worry about. Things like that. The, the fucking Titans. Elysium is dying. So if you're interested on in knowing why it's dying, how it could possibly be doing so. There you go. The third one is Demeter's perspective. It is a lot smaller than I anticipated. But um, it goes from Demeter's perspective, from her wanting of a child, her pregnancy. I will say there are trigger warnings, so be sure to read it because this one probably sticks to the harmonic hymn the most in what Demeter had to endure. Um, so make sure you read your trigger warnings very thoroughly. But it is dual perspective because Ares does have some chapters in this and in this she's not the villain so if you want to know how 
She caused a famine, but she wasn't the villain in it. This is hers, her perspective. The fourth one is coming out in 2025. It goes back to Corey's perspective and it is Persephone. That's the title of the book, so that's when she takes on the name Persephone. Yeah, there's gonna be two spin-offs, but the little novellas. The other book that I'm writing that's not in this series uh, is about the girl. She's actually a woman, she's 28 years old. Her and her friends go out to the forest and get drunk and end up summoning a demon and because she is the one that shook hands with him and some other unfortunate happenings, her and the demon end up tethered together so they can't go further than about a mile apart. They have this beautiful little matching kind of scar on their right hand and she is a necromancer which, well, she was a modern day witch that practiced necromancy and so when they traded their souls, her and her friends, they did so for magic. So they all get actual magic based on what they practiced as modern witches this is the cover this is just a um like a sample or this is a proof it's like half edited and you can see halfway through that it has notes and stuff for myself and because it sat in the sun it broke right there it sat in the sun on my way to go get my husband because i wanted to look at it while he drove home because I had to go pick them up from work um, and it got too hot for the glue and I opened it. This is the back. I love the back. That's Mina. No, that's Mina, the main character. That's Mina. That's Irius. The demon, the necromancer witch. It is the biggest, it's the longest book I've written. It also is a, bigger than The Taking of Persephone by, this is six by nine. These are five by eight. So. This is getting, this was a commission cover, so with the Taking of Persephone series, I did do my own covers. I did only do alpha and betas to edit. This went through all professionalism. It's getting a professional edit, back and all this. So these are my books. Anyways, <laughs> that's all for today. I will have more videos to film. It's the editing process that catches me. I do hope to see you guys next week. Cerberus. All right. Bye.